Hey guys, welcome to game three between RTG and Zeddy. Or see it, I do. Upper right hand corner, we have TNG as the blue Terran, upper left hand corner. We have, I want to call it the Peach. Peach Zerg. This is going to be on Polypoid, which is a map I assume people are familiar with. Same, same map from last season, a little bit more macro oriented. Does have a ramp. Overlord is going bottom left hand corner first here. And I, knowing the initial play styles, if we see Zeddy open up with Overpool again, I think I would give a little bit of an advantage to RTG, but RTG's got to block. Like he's got to, he's got to get that ramp. I wonder if he was the, just what happened where maybe he just thought he was playing against Protoss for a second. I don't know what happened last match. I know that happens occasionally where you forget who you're playing against and it's like, oh wait, what was happening here? But yeah, I didn't, I have to admit, I was a bit confused and again, Supply Depot in that back corner might keep this front door open. And being that Overpool was the opener for the last two matches, I feel like... And he, we know RTG knows how to blockade because he did it game one Blue Storm. I'm curious what the logic is as far as leaving the base wide open uh, in game three, particularly when we've seen Overpool two times. Uh, we looks like we are maybe going to see a 12th hatch on this map. Being that it is polypoid, it's not a three-player map. It's a, I think that's what it was, is it was maybe more, uh, oh, I'm going to expect you to go for a 12th hatch. But even with a 12th hatch, I kind of heard, I, I remember hearing um, Gypsy mention this before, is, is why would you not wall off when it costs you nothing to wall off? It's like very minimal time delay. SCV scouting bottom right-hand corner. We are seeing the hatchery plop down and a drone scout out for Zeddy. No gas just yet. So maybe even, we'll see, maybe kind of a, and actually... Are we going to see 3-hatch? This almost looks like we're going to see straight 3-hatch from Zeddy. Because Zeddy is not not plopping down gas. Okay, take it back. There's the spawning pool. I was looking for the drone to kind of go in that position to do it. But Barracks out on that corner. I don't think he's going to pay for it. I don't think RTG is going to pay for it this time. Drone actually doing cross-scouting this time. And SCV wandering in does see that hatchery planted down. And also, critically, sees a lack of larva being saved. So knows, so RTG knows that they are in a safe defensive position, canceling the Marine as a result, and gonna go ahead and walk out and get an earlier command center right off the bat. I like that play from RTG. Although might want to follow it up with a bunker, preventatively built. And also this is gonna pay off because this drone scout is very delayed getting into that upper right hand base. Third hatch going down before that spawning pool is even finished and gas as well. Still just larva waiting to be built. And we're only seeing two Zerglings. And this is even, this is like, RTG has to feel great about this. So it's usually a sign we don't see all three larvae being expended immediately. That, okay, it's not a, not a press that way. Drone walks up, gets attacked by the Marine a little bit, sees that hatchery being built. Additional barracks, but still what I would like to see, just in case, is a bunker or something. Some additional defenses, because this is going to be three hatcheries. That's going to be additional larva, and that is going to be 14 drones inside Zeddy's base capable of producing Zerglings. And this is an exposed natural expansion. Still. Uh, SCV attacking that third hatchery. Spotting it a little bit. No upgrade. So I'm going to wait and see whether we're seeing a direct push for three hatch layer. Reduce that layer being upgraded immediately. I'm wondering if this is going to be another quick one. Only a single SCV in gas as well. Four Marines on the corner. And the question is, is does Zeddy... Recognize so he this is the thing though is Zeddy's just straight macroing as well. I don't think that Zeddy realizes that he's in a situation where he might be able to just dive in and go for it. Academy actually placed at that natural expansion. Layer about halfway finished. So it looks like Zeddy, because of lack of scouting information, not having an overlord on that corner, missing a bit of an opportunity. RTG both players just going straight macro, effectively, at this stage. RTG a little bit light on the barracks, though. Still at two. I still worry about what he... Okay, now getting a bunker. So opportunity might be a little bit lost. That layer just about finishing. Looking for that engineering bay inside his base momentarily. Zergling speed is being upgraded. And are we going to see lurkers now? Or are we going to see Spire? SCV seeing that second gas which usually suggests that it's going to be more of a Spire build. He's going to go ahead and back out with that SCV, so good amount of information there. 
Spire's been planted. Stim being upgraded. This bunker will help a bit against those Mutalisks. And there's the Engineering Bay. So both players playing, honestly, I'll, I'll say it, a little bit greedy economically to start. Zeddy going very economical. And considering only having Zerglings on the ground and not really having any other scouting information, playing a little bit light. Let's see if these Zerglings are going to see these marine, Medic Marines kind of positioning to go for an attack. And this is kind of a similar situation to Game 1, where these Medic Marines, as they're pushing out, it might open up an opportunity where those Lurker... Or the Lurkers... Where the... Ooh, and a Firebat. So RTG's going for it. He's hoping that, okay, even if they are the Creek Colony, might just go for a straight bust. But if he's overly aggressive here, he might end up losing this Medic Marine Force, Medic Marine Firebat Force, on the front door. Still working on weapons range, working on weapons one as well. He's making his way across. These Creep Colonies have not yet... Okay, now they're starting to morph, and I don't know that they're going to be... They're not going to be finished by the time these Medic Marines get here. The Zerglings pulling them back, actually buying a little bit of time as RTGs making his way back, and that's going to allow them to complete. Plus, you have the Mutalisks. That are gonna, there's seven Mutalisks on the way. I think this is a dead Medic Marine Force on the front door. The Zerglings going for a counterattack. They're going to try to get a run by, and it looks like they are going to be able to run by in the main because there's the Medic... Uh, sorry, the Marines trying to evacuate. If they can take down a turret or even damage a turret, that's going to help. Especially thinning out Marines or reducing their health without any medic support. That SCV going to try to heal things up. Zeddy playing much more defensively, though. And with these seven Mutalisks, eight Mutalisks, let's see if he goes for the main or just decides to, with Zerglings, to wipe out this attack force on the front door. Looks like he's going to opt to engage this attack force. Wants to pick up that Firebat to make those Zerglings a little bit more effective initially. And again, this is where I feel like this would have been more effective with perhaps less lag. Between Peru and Germany, that's just an immense amount of lag. Now moving back towards the main. Factory up. This is a distance turret from the barracks support. So there is an opportunity with enough Mutalisks. And honestly, this is enough creep colonies to defend the main. Where Zeddy could go get damage done in the main. Instead, regrouping, just going to go straight Mutalisk Zergling to clear out that attack force. So that's been wiped out. There is a second grouping that looks like just pure Marines, no medics. And this is the second time we've seen it from RTG where his, his medic production has been low. No fourth barracks just yet in this build. He does have a single medic. Sorry, there's two medics sneaking out. But still, it's a little bit of a low attack force. One Mutalisk getting picked off again in the lag, kind of grouping up on that corner. RTG with the economic lead with the supply count lead currently. Zeddy using Mutalisks for map control is going to try to sneak this expansion in the bottom left-hand corner. So the Marines would have to be absolutely everywhere. And I'm looking for him to go ahead and, since he's got these creep colonies on the front, to go ahead and get a little bit aggressive. He's putting down a fourth creep colony, which just seems like it's honestly a bit too much, considering that all of the mutalisks he's got and everything else. Regrouping. Diving in. Zerglings and mutalisks now in the main. That turret is not going to be... shouldn't last very long. It looks like he's having some trouble target firing with the zerglings. Now on top of the barracks, the medic marines not coming back to the main. They're going to go ahead and press towards the bottom left, which honestly, he needs to pull back and these mutalists to just stay on top of the barracks and kill any uh, attack force that's regrouping. Splitting that attack force now. Some medic marines making their way back across. Some marines working on that main. Zerglings continue to work against the turrets and barracks heavily damaged. Are we seeing more reinforcements? Some lurkers and zerglings making their way across now and the mutalists evacuating as the marines are, are flooding in. They're a bit piecemeal and again lag. Oh, additional mutalists being wiped out. But, RTG able to take out that bottom left-hand base. Supply count's just about even. Honestly, and he's waking his way towards Hive Tech. Still anybody's match. Zeddy's going to go ahead and clear out bottom left. Able to kill that Marine very easily. Two turrets in the natural expansion, it looks like. Two turrets in the main, so still somewhat defended here. Got that turret back up. The starport is a bit damaged. Barracks a little bit worse for wear. For a second there, I thought that was going to be GG. Perhaps with some reinforcements, perhaps some additional Mutalisks in the main. Just a flood of Mutalisks might have ended the game there. Zeddy sitting at 
29 drones. His mutilus force is somewhat weakened. Still doesn't have a third base. Has some lurkers to maybe support this, but this is a sizable attack force that does have level 1 weapons moving out for RTG. Honestly, as this is moving into the mid game, I want to favor RTG a little bit. Mostly because Zerg wants that third gas, and science vessels are already up in the air, and Irradiate's already on the way. Lurkers and Lings making their way forward. I like the factory being used for scouting. Third base being spotted. The one thing, though, is his RTG does have to cover a lot of ground, and being caught out of position as these Lurkers and these Zerglings able to get on top of that bunker inside that natural. The Medic Marines making their way back. That attack force wiped out. There is detection here. But RTG might end up losing a lot of SCVs before the reinforcements get there. So that's about three kills, four kills. He's going to be able to clean up the Lurkers otherwise. But not before. Oof. Oh, and ends up losing even more SCVs as he was grouping them for perfect Lurker shots. Down to 27 SCVs. So now I'm going to swing back to Zeddy's favor. Single Marines trying to deal with drones. He's going to be able to slow down an additional base, but that's going to give Zeddy some opportunity to do a lot of things. Let's see if he gets some more Lurkers and Lings kind of in me. I'm almost looking for a whole position Lurker somewhere out in the field. Does have a Science Vessel out. And actually, this was kind of a discussion I was having. Shout out to Erdman, who's uh, watching this live. Often you know, I feel like, yeah, oftentimes you can get ahead of Terran, but sometimes it's difficult to just kill them when you're already significantly ahead. Of course, the, said, the same can be said for Hive Tech Zerg, comparatively. Zeddy getting supply blocked with that last kill. Needs to be really babysit this science vessel. Lurker is moving in on this medic marine force as they're pinned, uh, they pin themselves a little bit into a wall. The Hydralisks tapping on that science vessel. It is low on health. One scourge in the air would be able to take it out. Critically, we see the Phyler Mount being built, Nidus Canal for that bottom left-hand corner. That Nidus Canal timing is going to be huge as Medic Marines are streaming to this bottom left-hand corner. Another Medic Marine force and some Science Vessels. Actually, sorry, just pure Marines again. And some Science Vessels making their way against this Lurker force. I think this bottom base is well defended because of these two Lurkers and the lack of Science Vessel to support. As that's happening, Hydros can just... Oh, sorry, the Medics rejoined at a distance but were wiped out. Another Irradiate. They're getting backed into the Mineral Line and slowly getting wiped out. That science, The Science Vessels... Also eating some additional damage. So, going to have to wait on a Radiates to go ahead and punch through that Lurker line. And actually taking out one Lurker, usually you can... Sometimes you can do it that way. If Zeddy can stay, can get some sort of macro and push from there, he might be able to take control of this match. RTG's doing what he did in game one again and just really macroing well into this mid-game. Reinforcements coming through this Nidus Canal. Are we going to see some additional Lurkers to provide some support? We'll have to see. Queen's Nest is up. Double Evolution Chamber. That's resulting in level 1 weapons, level 1 armor comparatively. We are seeing level 1 weapons, level 1 armor. So about even in the overall upgrade sphere, which usually is disadvantageous for Marines. Another dropship being produced to go above that Lurker line. But unfortunately with that Nidus Canal in place, I don't know that it's going to do a lot. Zeddy, even with drones overall. But the critical thing is, is can he keep the science vessel count low? Because there's still... That's five science vessels already up in the air, and that's continuing to be count. And he does have double starports pushing this off two bases. Critically, though, RTG's been sitting on one base for a very long period of time, and has not showed any movement to go ahead to, to taking a third. Lurker's going ahead and wiping out this medic marine force from the high ground. There's a lot of lurkers to protect that bottom left. Feels like this is a very late third established at 14, as far as secured at 14 minutes. Two additional hatcheries being plopped down for Zeddy. Does have Hive Tech, does have Defiler Mound, is working on just finally getting range uh, for the Hydras. The Hydras are there to pick off the Science Vessel, so one Science Vessel down. This is kind of the new meta, is having Lurkers and Hydras and Plague, and kind of playing things that direction. Dropship dropping into that behind the natural. Lurkers are there to go ahead and wipe that out. I'm going to go ahead and relift. And the Hydralis is working on that dropship. It looks like they are going to be able to get into the main, though. And another swarm of Medic Marines making their way towards the front. And there are some Mutalists there to, to wipe that out. These Hydralis are going to spot all of these troops coming. These looks like these Medics were salvaged from that attack force in the bottom left. And another 
swarm of medics making their way up. I don't see... Okay, there's some lurkers on the front. I think this should be well secured. I'm looking to see if there's going to be a plague. Nope, no plague up just yet. Metamarines are going to be pushed back. Zeddy, feeling strong, he's actually ahead. Kind of unusual to see the Zerg ahead in the overall worker count. He's sitting at 44 drones, 43 drones, versus 40 SCVs. But again, I heard a science vessel explode. Two science vessels explode. Uh, to some idolists kind of sneaking around that back corner. They're trying to spot and see what they can do. Drop in that bottom left. Looks like it got a handful of drones, but it got cleaned up otherwise. And RTG trying to sneak an expansion at the 3 o'clock. This overlord does, in fact, see it. He doesn't have a lot of troops on the ground, honestly. He's got, what, one and a half? A lot of medics, but one and a half attack uh, troops, and he lost a lot of those science vessels out in the air. Getting a handful of irradiates off, but this is the stage of the game where Zeddy, if he just macros, even with the pure hydalists, might be able to just walk over everything that RTG has. And I don't know that RTG, because he needs to be pinning his opponent in, and again, more Marines kind of join, it's kind of joining their fellow medics in midfield. Three o'clock bases up, SEVs aren't there. Zerg and yeah, when you have even supply count, usually that favors Zerg. Wondering if Zeddy is going to continue to play the macro game, for, go for an additional base, or if he's going to try to challenge that 3 o'clock base. Critically, that Nidus Canal, I missed this, that Nidus Canal with that drop was taken out. So trying to reestablish this, pure Hydralisk engaging this, which typically does not trade well against pure Medic Marine, but because RTG is one... Oh, catching that Science Vessel once again has been a little bit lighter. Ooh! Using Swarm. Hydrosis are great with the Swarm if you can just pin the Marines out where they can't quite get into the Swarm. Again, seeing very cutting-edge meta play here. Nine o'clock base is trying to be taken, but you see a Swarm of Marines and a handful of Medics making their way out. And critically, what that's doing for Zeddy is all of these Hydrosis pinning up, that's really kept the Science Vessel count lower than it was in Game 1, which might be the difference here. And he's doing a good job of straying on top of that macro and keeping things basically even. Still, those irradiates are coming out. And you can see RTG just is getting pushed further and further back. Was able to take out that 9 o'clock. Doesn't look like that was canceled. Looks like he's been able to establish that 3 o'clock. Now, let's see if Zeddy can just get another base and get some, some semblance of map control. Hydalus is moving their way across. That looks like he is trying to make his way towards the main. Level 2 weapons, level 2 armor, by the way, for both sides. And without medics, yeah, these marines just getting obliterated and getting caught in the middle of Zeddy's army and trying to retreat. This is like, this is exactly what you want to see. I got to feel like this is every marine's fantasy right here. Where it's like just two marines, you don't have to worry about fighting however many medics. This is like a full control group of medics right here. Right? Anyway. Science vessels, if Zeddy's on top of it, are going to get picked off. Looks like he's in the red momentarily, as an overlord got picked off. Another overlord quickly replacing him. That's the science vessel count out, and I think that might be all she wrote for RTG. Three o'clock base. Looks like it got pushed in while well, I was missing that. Some SCVs pulled off to that corner, and that's getting lifted off. Now RTG, yeah, in a lot of trouble. Lost his third. Might end up losing this command center. SCVs fighting Hydalisks, which is like something out of a one of the cutscenes, like a horror movie cutscene. 9 o'clock base uh, has been held, yes, but it looks like that bottom left-hand corner is also being additionally established by Zeddy. So Zeddy continuing to grab more and more economic control. He is well ahead in the worker count. Yeah, there's a lot of medics, but uh, yeah, trying to take that 12 o'clock, but I still feel like, yeah, he's in a good position. A lot of barracks running, but the main is mined out. Natural expansion is getting thin. 3 o'clock base is gone. RTG, if he's going to win this, he needs to do something now. It looks like he's starting to peel out and try to push to this bottom left-hand corner. There is a Nidus Canal there and a handful of Hydralisks. Plus, Hydralisks kind of shadowing the rest of this attack force. He's going to try to take this mineral only and just hope that... I don't know how he's going to hold map control there, though, considering big Medic Marine Force diving on this Hydralisk Force is going to be able to take a handful of Hydralisks out, but that's going to be a big signal to Zeddy that he needs to defend this bottom left. Get some lurkers down there, something down there, in a hurry. So keep an eye on this Nidus Canal and that mini-map. Looks like Zeddy doesn't quite have the troops to get there. He's backing off in that bottom right corner for some reason with the rest of those Hydalists. 
Lurker's pressing in using Comsat because he doesn't have any science vessels to push into this otherwise. Now Lurker's pulling back. He's just sacking this hatchery, interestingly. Okay, there he's got some swarm. Two additional Lurker's moving in. The medic's not dying because, you know, they're medics. They're kind of beefy. The medic's actually tanking here. Actually uh, tanking some damage. 12 o'clock base is there, but not quite producing yet. And Zeddy continuing to flood through more reinforcements. This is where those Nidus Canals really provide a lot of that mobility for Zeddy to get all over the map. Medic Marines are slow. We do see a BC in the air out of nowhere. Anticipating Ultralisks? Um, against Lurker Ling, honestly, and the Hybalists, I don't think it's all that great. I think, I think it was, yeah. I do not think it's all that great, uh, especially when Plague is there. Usually this is to, like, force gas into uh, Scourge comparatively, but the Hydalists are happy to just go ahead and attack this from the low ground, as the Medic Marines are just getting wiped out from underneath. You can see, yeah, they, they don't they don't fare very well against even small numbers of Hydalists. And it's on, yeah, two gas. Like, one gas that's, well, it's still there. Total Glock base, uh, still established. RTG looking for another attack bottom left, but between this Lurker and these Lurkers and a Stefiler, ooh, good plague as well. I don't think he's going to be able to crack that. Those Marines still milling about at the 9 o'clock location. He So is mining the mineral only. Is down to 91 supply. Mostly I feel like this is Zeddy not going for a kill. His main and natural are mined out. Let's see when he... So Zeddy actually needs to... Okay, he's going to get... Want to establish bases a little bit. I'm not sure what this Hydralist force is doing in this bottom right otherwise. Maybe just trying to deny that expansion. Kind of turning a starvation match. However, Zeddy is not keeping on top of his mining. Oh, and oversaturated here in the bottom left. So kind of giving opportunities for RTG to both stay in this match and perhaps come back into it. BC's moving into the 3 o'clock location. Killing a Zergling there. Might be able to float a command center there as a result. And that's the command center from the natural. Just to show kind of the desperate, the desperate situation from Zeddy here. Comp setting. Should be able to take care of that lurker. But Zeddy, yeah, okay. Now he, he's redistributing those drones. Might even want to take some additional bases. Can probably do so. Just pure Hydralisk with no Defiler support. Diving in and doing Concentrated Fire. This is actually a pretty good exchange for RTG. Medic, usually you don't see Hydralisks because Medic Marines just do so well against pure Hydralisks. Which is, but again, common meta is, yeah, you have a Defiler to support it. Now that Defiler joining that attack force. With the Plague, it's a completely different ballgame. But regrouping, it looks like some additional radiates out of that science vessel, allowing additional kill. And Zeddy playing, yeah, just playing kind of a shell defensive game, has allowed that 3 o'clock to get back up. Still has a supply count lead, has a large drone lead, and he's starting to saturate these expansions as well, which should, in theory, translate to better macro. He's starting to crack that 150 supply mark. Has a lot of hatcheries here in the background. Honestly, a little bit undercounted for this stage of the game. So what do we have? Four, five, six, seven hatcheries overall. Seven hatcheries overall. So a little bit lighter than he might want to be at this stage of the match. But I still got to give a big advantage to him. Spore colony being warped in. Science vessel right there. Hydralisks and lurkers looking to engage. And more medic marines going to that bottom left -hand corner. And now actually RTG might be able to get right back in this match. Killing some drones here at the natural. Medic mean lurker diving into the mineral only while well, that's happening, which looks like it's going to pull a lot of these troops back, but I don't know that it's going to be in time to save that bottom left-hand base. Command center lifting off. Looks like some Hydalists have managed to sneak under this Dark Swarm. In the meantime, they are engaging. Yeah, they're engaging right there. There might be enough Irradiate to clean that up otherwise. Ooh, BC's being taken out, and that's a lot of gas and minerals to lose. Command center in the air burning. I don't see an SCV here to support, and the Hydralists are continuing to work their way against it. Science Vessel down, Command Center down. Oof, RTG in a lot of trouble. So he's only mining at the 3 o'clock location. Science Vessel's in the area. BC's still there, bottom left. The Hatchery's still there. I think Zeddy is going to be able to reinforce. He's actually just walking Hydralisks in the bottom left. I gotta f I'm just going to point this out. What is with these lazy asses? Bottom right-hand corner. They've just been... They were like, nope, done fighting. All together in this match. Whatever. That's that's a bad time to have the GG. <laughs> but Zeddy. Lazy, lazy Hydralisks in the bottom right-hand corner of the map. Zeddy pushing into the natural expansion. RTG calling it there. Realizing he just doesn't have the economic 
ability to get back into this match. So he is going to advance to the round of eight. Congratulations to Zeddy. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I will probably do the rest of Group A Thursday and proceed from there. And I'll try to find out what happened to the Chobo League replays as well. But hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.